Hey, flying kite, calm before the storm here. That's a mouthful to like introduce the podcast. I'm probably gonna not do that ever again. But I'm going to keep that intro in just for like lack of creativity and effort. Deal with it. What what do I do? But unlike every time's intro, this one actually has a purpose, which is an admittance of a boo boo that I have made in making this uh, podcast. Actually, it's a bigger boo boo than usual. You guys would have minor inconveniences in previous podcasts because of uh, some technological incompetence that I have. But this time, I have really outdone myself. Uh, at the 99th episode i was recording with sultana who's the guest for this episode as you might have read in the title and uh, i forgot to press record on the backup uh, drive and i really need the backup recording for this one because i actually forgot to switch the mics on my main recording of course both the mis- mistakes were rectified within the first 13 minutes of the recording but nonetheless there is a little jarring loss of information for when you get dropped into the recording which i can compensate for i don't think it's unfixable it's just not ideal like i think i could have done a better job is all so i apologize to my audience for that and i'll just let you know where we were in discussion where sultana jumps in and takes over from me so the reason i invited sultana on the podcast is because i really wanted her to talk about her project which i heard her talk about on a zoom call in january she did her project as a part of her artist residency at beer her major part of the project was basically uh, creating and acquiring data about the trees in beer and the forests around beer and sort of mapping the net- networks of plants in the forests what these networks represented and what was she trying to acquire with that data well that is something that sultana herself can explain to you after i cue the fucking so i was interested in networks and i was looking at networks all sensorially and then and here comes this guy he's like networks are represented mathematically in this way and i was mind blown cuz uh, cuz uh, i couldn't uh, for a while i spent a whole night thinking about how could i didn't know how and so he 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 said that they can be and i will tell you tomorrow and so i was thinking about how can networks be represented mathematically and then i found it out it was very interesting it's like you do it in a matrix in an n cross n matrix and uh, uh, you have to see it to know it you maybe could do a google search if you feel like it the deep fried crowd and um, and so so the idea was the idea that i i was interested in was to kind of map tree networks and other i mean mostly tree network a tree network a network of trees a bunch of trees growing together for years and years say uh, and all of them different ages and but they're all the same species and they're all t- together so which means that they are all under connected under the ground which means the other ones came along um, um so the the first ones would know about the new coming along uh, so a group of trees a group of trees growing in a place all the same species on a spot of land in himachal um uh, there's there is no roads after that point mm-hmm. the roads end and um, the villages there's a, a, there's two villages past that point only uh, after which you can't go any further because it's like a straight up wall of mountain so two villages which are also just ped- like you can only walk there and a few houses like two three houses in both villages something like this this is the landscape where uh, i found this group of trees um from bangalore uh, as in looking at the google map overview of the of the planet and and my idea was and i was looking for this kind of specific uh, is kind of an isolated network so that i could look at the network itself and look at it in in a way that we look at networks like humans look at networks to find intelligence because we're like we're like this shit is intelligent we're intelligent uh nobody else is intelligent only we are intelligent so anyway i don't think so and i'm like no let's look at them let's really look at them in your language so then i so that was that was kind of the idea uh, to map them to map the distances between them to map their ages uh, their re- relative ages and kind of put it all into a mathematical grid like network to system and um, then apply the same measures and parameters as we do to to networks uh, which are which are which we look at like which we study uh, which scientists look at and study so i just wanted to 
do this and uh, it was a simple idea and i wrote to the person at the residency the curator and he was interested in it and so i went there when i went there and i was 15 15 days or so i was mapping i was mapping the distances and i was very excited because i was able to i was seeing numbers which were repeating themselves in a, in some pattern and i could feel like oh there's some pattern here and um, i spent a lot of time in under that under that bunch of trees and there was there was many birds which i started to know it was incredible experience 15 days passed like that and i was very happy with the progress of the work and um, mm-hmm. and all of that um and then i was sitting one day having tea opposite the same i mean there was right down from uh, right underneath that uh, set of trees a few meters down there's a tea shop and i'm having tea and this guy comes the local there's a local guy from the other vi- from the village next door he and so i ask him i ask him something or something we are talking and he's like the forest department came and planted these bunch of trees some 20 years ago and i was like what what and uh, i mean so he he didn't say 20 years ago but he just said that long time because sense of time in himachal is you know i mean mm-hmm. 20 years 30 years you don't know <laughs> <laughs> one day two day you don't know <laughs> so he said these uh, first department guys came here and planted this entire plantation and i was like what so this entire thing that i'm doing is just bullshit because somebody actually came and planted this tree and i'm thinking that the tree is thinking i'm mm-hmm. thinking that oh look at this old tree next to this young tree the old tree must have been like hey son you grow here you'll be fine i'll take care of you but uh, so it's the trees thinking but it's not it's not it's the it's the forest department so so i was pretty disappointed and i was like wow that day i went back i was like i i was actually also hurt and i was also actually i was actually also lost and hurt and also scared cuz i was like firstly like uh, i should have known this Mm-hmm. I mean I felt response I, I was like why why didn't I know this and then I was like well okay fine I didn't know this but what will I do now and then also that uh, how the fuck is this a thing sorry bad words you No no that's allowed that. completely allowed uh, like you're allowed to say all the bad words allowed. if that's what helps you express yourself Yeah okay <laughs> so I was like um so I was like that's uh, I was basically lost and I went back to my curator he gave me a beer he was like chill out it's fine you figure this or <laughs> whatever um i and then i was i ranted i ranted for about half an hour i was like and then he pointed to the mountain which he could see from the from the window and he said all of those trees that you see all of these pine trees they're all planted and so i said that hey man you knew that these are planted trees he was like i didn't know that those were also planted because those were douglas fir like not douglas fir sorry which ones are the deodar so those were deodars and then what usually is there is pine mm-hmm. uh anyway so i was like okay let's get into the depth of this matter the next day i go to the forest department and the thing is that it sounds like when you say that oh let's go to the forest department it's like you'll go somewhere and it'll be something but it's nothing it's just it's empty room there's hardly anybody they don't care there's a dog and i i went there and i was like hey you're the forest department and they're like yeah what do you want <laughs> <laughs> and i was like uh, <laughs> and and uh, they were so forest department in beer was hardly interested and they didn't even so i asked them do you plant these trees and they were like uh, yeah we do and uh, and I, then i asked them then they showed me their sort of nursery and things where they just kind of do this and i was like 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 what is the idea behind it how and then i okay so I, since i was more concerned about what i had found and all of that like the number the distances between trees so i asked them that you know like is there a logic to how you plant the trees and they were like yeah yeah we do it uh, a few meters apart some x number of meters away we do it from from each other so they they grow so then i was like here goes all the patterns oh look at that uh, then i went to the shimla forest department which was like a little bit more i couldn't find anybody in the forest department in beer because mm-hmm. uh, they all just go for rounds and for their forest fires and things so they're just like all off so nobody's in the office and even if they are in the office it's hardly it's like so it was hard to be able to really get any information because they were also it, like 
it's a standard indian bureaucracy problem nobody wants to talk yeah. to you yeah 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 and then also yeah basically so then i went to shimla no not shimla sorry um oh which is the nearest bigger one it's not hmm. shimla definitely shimla is very far manali but i went to the mm, no it's called i don't I, i can't remember the name of the nearest uh, nearest sort of city mm, i can find that. well i i forget but i went mm-hmm. to it it was like slightly more serious place and i asked them about uh, what is like how does this work what is the pattern what is the p- thing for that i had to sit for like about 3 hours in their office listening to the, all of their other conversations which were also damn interesting it was one guy it was it was same conversation happened for 3 hours there was one guy asking for something the other guy was saying i can't give it to you that's it and 3 uh, hours later they were like what do you want and i was like i want to know everything about how you do this and they were like um, well madam there is a research center also in shimla and there's this and that and we don't know how this really works we just follow orders and mostly it's like we plan things and um, uh, um but after all of this bureaucratic thing um here are some facts that i found which would be which are which is what i came came with there are many kinds of forests in himachal uh, all of them some some are called reserved some are called protected forest some is called reserved area all of these things mm-hmm. but none of them none of them none of this words mean anything um which would say that this is a sort of an untouched or old growth forest so there is no way and all of these forests are basically plantations made by the british during that time they raised everything everything mm-hmm. and put these pine trees and uh then and and, and so there is like they were like four or five different kinds of trees they planted when the in the when india got independence and the forest department took over forest department was like hey this is this is our you know her, this is our resources and heritage mm-hmm. and all of that and we will protect it so they were like not cutting a single tree they like this is it um whatever this is we will keep it as it is and these are all plantations so now we're protecting and we care about all of these plantations which and there was two interesting things i observed when i was there in the in the in the plantation in the the deodar plantation there was a very few insects which is a very surprising thing for any for any place uh, which is like that like um fully mm-hmm. um so so that's one of the observations and also in the pine forest there are hardly any and and the whole time in the one month that we were there we saw so many forest fires and they are like a daily thing like daily thing they always on mm-hmm. some you so you sitting at night uh looking looking at at the at the sky and there is a forest fire all so you can see a thin line of glow thin glowing line on on the on the mountain which is going to recede or increase or go in one direction and that is the fire blazing up the entire floor which is filled with pine needles and um, and that's just because that this is it's a singular plant there's nothing else there's nothing else in that basically it's bad ecological uh thought and it's just uh, there's nothing anybody can do about it now because uh, himach we as 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 a country and himachali people and the forest department are not allowed to cut cut a tree mm-hmm. if they cut a tree they they have to pay some fine and they could also be in jail so they cannot you cannot cut a tree uh, this was another thing there was another thing there's a poplar plant um so that was also under the reserved category which meant that you cannot also cut a poplar tree but the poplar trees were kind of bad so the poplar trees was kind of bad for uh whatever reasons and for the environment and also for the water table and other things they so they decided to chuck the poplar tree out of the list of reserved things so now you can freely cut poplar so then that became that be, that that's how that's how you get around law and policy you chuck out something from the reserved list to be able to cut it down which might be good for the environment in general but also cutting of trees cannot also be good at all times so it's really complicated when it really comes to it um 
and i mean and here we are with the co- colonial legacy that we really don't know how to kind of uh, deal with because any, doing anything can do more harm than good i mean it's not like uh, now at least all of these plantations themselves are some 70 years old some of them uh, and so on so and f- but here's two interesting things one is that the forest department's way of thinking has evolved a little bit but also they they, they stand on the ground of that colonial understanding of how forests or or how green like how this should be done so that puts us in a bad starting point in a way when thinking about what uh, how to do this because they're still doing some kind of monoculture and all that now some researchers and some forest department researchers coming up and saying that okay we can do something else but like yeah this is this is this is what i found um that there were mostly all monocultures there were very few insects and um in in a lot of places and there was constant forest fires and all of this is because that's what that's what the british did and we are just dealing with it like the forest department the research department me you them everybody just we just dealing with we like okay and even people who live there they, they've accepted it as the as as how it is mm-hmm. that's yeah this is kind of the and, and i was and now i feel quite normal about this uh, normal in the sense that I, it's normalized for me this is a fact for me now not an emotional fact anymore but it was very very hardcore mm-hmm. when i actually found out at that point because i was like i'm going to untouched land of himachal <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i mean a few a, a few reflections on what you said so far um throughout the time when you t- told me about Uh, the forest department and then finding out the british starting the entire process of plantation um is bougainvillea because that's the colonial plant that i grew up around it's not like indigenous to india it's been brought here from argentina and one of the things it did is that it started killing all the uh, vines in the gardens because it was so invasive mm. uh and actually yeah. did quite a lot of damage to like ecology and it's considered like a beautiful plant even still because our aesthetic is defined by colonial standards which is why everybody likes stone houses still um anyway the point isn't just how how much british left behind but it's a parallel that's a, that's running across everything and the second reflection i had is um the the normalization of it for the people of himachal and for both of us with this information is this discrepancy in information action ratio that is a constant growth for me that i realize something and i realize there's nothing i can do about it because i don't know the full extent of the problem and how deep it is and just the the dissonance between my action and my thought keeps growing uh and i i don't know how to feel about that i feel like it's a bad thing that most of the knowledge i have isn't actionable anymore and the third and the most important one that i kind of want your opinion on is so far what i've heard from you is most of what you thought was untouched land is anthropological intervention and yes. i really want to understand what your opinion uh, on it on an uh, on it is on an ethical basis because one of the reservations i have about space travel for example uh, i am i've been fascinated with space ever since i was a child looking at pictures of space is what gives me a lot of joy but i also know going there is what is going to start entropy of pollution like for example a footstep on moon is not going to wash away because there's no atmosphere um we know the atmosphere on mars is also super thin so we know if anything we do there is going to start a chain reaction that's going to destroy what the planet ever was or what its identity was to us before that so what do you believe is the ethical limit of um anthropological intervention with rest of ecology or untouched land so to speak should we or should we not do it and why um uh, so it's a, it's a tough one it's a tough one and also it's like whenever there is a there is a sense of should we or should we not do it who's we it becomes the thing because we are not we we are not one at all 
mm-hmm. as in whenever if there is going to be space travel some people will travel out and then they will be like oh those left behind the ones left behind will be like those who went away did a lot of shit damage to 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 us and um, there will already already be in us in them and so it's like an emergent system of agents where all agents uh, have their own um so so to speak like freedom to do whatever they want like if if someone if if someone decides to go to mars which now we can like it's possible now to do it almost like o- we're almost there and if we do decide to go to mars and um, do some major havoc whatever people are saying that let's nuke it that's just the funniest thing to me you know this idea right let's just nuke mars do you know about this no i don't go ahead tell me educate me oh. so there's the idea that let's nuke mars and what will happen is that there'll be clouds and clouds of dust and the uh, and 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 um uh, what is it dust and uh, like gaseous matter particulate matter as well as gaseous matter and then then what we can try to do is it'll have an atmosphere sort of thing and then we can try to work with that mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um but the idea is to first nuke it firstly that's that's what we want to do mm-hmm. if we want to go there let's first do that so that's that's quite interesting and um in fact th- there is there is this idea to also do that to our planet uh our little blue planet there is actually yesterday i was reading there's this climate uh world climate something which says what are all the uh, viable um climate uh climate calamity mitigation strategies on the table at the moment and what are they number 1 nuke it it's not number 1 though it's somewhere like number 4 or something uh something like that top 5 <laughs> uh, yeah top 5 so so when it comes to like this this saying go uh, you know should we or should we not first see there's no we and what i think should we or should we not well there isn't anything like untouched land yes there isn't it but this can answer be answered only very very personally uh, in the sense that if an individual goes there goes to wherever untouched himachali land or untouched mars martian land or untouched uh, lunar land but wherever we go it's up to the it's really the it's really the individual who has to who has to know um that what to do in that encounter because that encounter it, it's it's a new encounter as in it, it's it, it's 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 a unprecedented thing it's a new encounter and you have to make the, that choice at that at that point i suppose so i wouldn't say that it's i think it's extremely short sighted and stupid of british uh to do this all over the world they basically globally fucked up the entire um natural ecosystems of many many places not just india not mm-hmm. just india but also canada so this film of mine was shown in canada because uh, the Can- the the canadian curator felt some kind of connect with that because it's the same thing it's the same thing with them um and also there's another like you were talking about bougainvillea there's also something called the rain tree mm mm-hmm. um and that is also not that's also not uh, indian bangalore is filled with rain trees and bangalore's beauty is rain trees but it's also not indigenous uh, bangalore is a grassland uh, but the british came here and they were like hey great climate and all let's bring our trees bring it along and then we, here we are like uh, uh, from mexico and brazil so they brought their trees from mexico and brazil and planted them here in this grassland changed the ecosystem of it and here we are now so uh, but we're already standing on so many layers and layers of of anthropocizing things and um, uh, and just that human activity it cannot be it, it, it you cannot really i cannot really say you know i i i, I don't think i can say that what is the what is the limit because firstly because 
what can I, I mean, how does it even matter if I say there is a limit? And also because how do we set limits? We don't. I mean, we, we're, mm-hmm. we're wild people. That's an interesting way to put it. We're a wild people because uh, the reason I you know, like sort of position that question that way is one, I really wanted to know your opinion. I know it's a, mm-hmm. it's a very subjective question with no right answer technically. Um, and the reason I ask it the way I do is because uh, one of the understandings of anthropological intervention in ecology that I understand it through is uh, through the Kardashev scale of civilizational progress, uh, where basically Kardashev says that the progress of a civilization is measured through its technological proficiency of extracting resources from its surrounding. And how far can it go to extract resources from everything. So he quite literally talks about civilization and its success graph as a fungal infestation on its entire surrounding and how much can it sort of seek out of it for how long with how much efficiency. And um, that sort of made me interesting, like got me interested because it connected my brain to this other philosophy that I discussed on this podcast called antinatalism, which assigns negative value to birth saying that having, having giving, giving something birth is causing it suffering and suffering to everyone around it by the nature of just like how much expense is going to cause to everything. So to what extent do we orient civilizational progress to causing as little harm to everything else as opposed to efficiently procuring resources for everyone that there already is, is the duality that I sort of created. And I got some answers through what you spoke in the, um, I want to say in an analogy of the British, because a lot of what the British believed they were doing, even in India, is that they believed they were doing the right thing. A lot of people are still proud of the British Empire in Britain. I think 59% according to Vice. Um, They don't know that 45 trillion of train building in India was done by the taxes that we paid. They believe that railway system was a favor they did for us as a a method of um, uplifting the Indian communities. So I genuinely believe that there were British people who believed they were doing the right thing when they did what they did and whose repercussions we have to stick with. So I want to see how our decisions will be seen one by ourselves in our time and somebody else in the team uh, in the time that is going to come ahead and what your opinion is on that perception and why if at all that matters. Can you, uh, is there, is there a question? Yeah. I mean, my question is basically, um, partly about generational equity. The question is that our actions in the conditions that we spoke about now Mm -hmm. about anthropological intervention, not just in like the example of earth is what we've taken and we're applying it to space. Um, so do you think that whether or not we choose to nuke it or not nuke it, how do you think it will be received? We know how it will be felt about because we can discuss that right now. Okay. So here is something I think about this exact thing. I've spent some time thinking about um, this, this exact idea of the ball of the ball of the planet that, you know, we're here. And uh, this is how, this is how I see it. There's two things I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay. The first one is an experiment I did with mycelium um, again a few years ago, where there was like there was a bowl, and uh, and I there was some coffee filters uh, emptied out coffee filters, which is a good substrate to grow it uh, to grow some oyster oyster fungi on or something. So I put inside. I I, it was um, I chucked in some of this and I chucked in some of the spores. And I just left it there. I watered it for a couple of couple of days, and I covered it with the with the plastic sheet. This is a bowl with coffee coffee grounds and mycelium and some spores. And slowly, the the surface of the of the 
uh, fungi of the substrate started to shift and change and there was like form changing and I've, and and then there was uh, this mycelial network started growing on the walls it was a transparent like glass bowl so on the glass bowl all around they started growing uh, upwards uh, as so what what happens is first the mycelial network completely covers the substrate so that it's all in all every every particle is is kind of in touch with some substrate so the so the mycelium knows the substrate now now it's trying to move to find more and so it goes up the walls then as it goes up the walls it encounters gravity when the when the walls turn towards the other way like it's a it's a round fish bowl so the so so when it encounters gravity it stops i wonder why it stops uh, because it encounters gravity or or what but that's what i observed that in in a couple of these fish bowl experiments when the mycelium is moving um actually you can see the networks on the wall so all the, all the walls are covered with like mycelial networks and then at one point it just stops and then what happens then what happens is damn interesting the mycelium goes into a space in a into a phase where it spores and uh, this is oyster mushroom so ideally what the mycelium actually what the what the organism actually wants to do is produce a mushroom because it found substrate it's found food and it is a sexual maturity cycle of that spore to to grow into an organism into a full organism and then produce a couple of mushrooms or a single or whatever x number of mushrooms and then what happens happens because then the spores in the mushroom kind of spread out and it will continue to grow uh that's what the organism is thinking now since the substrate is not enough to produce an entire mushroom this is just a little bit of substrate so but it grew but the mycelium grew and it kind of found out that okay this is not enough for me to kind of produce an entire mushroom so it goes into another stage which is which is a self it's like suicide and uh, it, it's suicide because there's nothing else to do in a way so what happens it does not produce mushroom but it produces a bunch of spores and these are singular spores on a uh, so like you, you know they're like tiny mo- like molecular like millimeter sized things which kind of come up to the surface and they're all red they're all red and then so 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 one day i look at this fish bowl and it is like a farmland of red and white dots Mm-hmm. this red and white color was not there at all it was like black and i i and then to one day like it so it starts it's red and white all over the surface covered and then boom it dies and then at that moment when it dies all this uh, nerves and all i mean the uh, the veins of the mycelial network which were on the surface and all of that they become flat meaning they i can see their residue but they're not living before that they were like this living in the sense that i could see this water in them this is like active and uh, so what it does is it takes all the energy there is and the organism just kills it it, it suicides but with a bang like okay whatever we ha- whatever we have we have to put it in this one um, you know s- set of spores which are going to go out and that's it boom so i i i spent like a long time thinking about what happened in mm-hmm. this in this experiment and here's the thing this is so so what each organism is kind of doing always is always trying to find more and more thing space to explore so it can be food to explore or space even for even for humans there always has to be something that we're exploring uh or there is an unknown we're moving towards there has to be if everything comes within the realm of the known then you're basically in a cage which is why tigers i mean everybody stresses out in a cage tigers lions us mycelium oh and you want to kill yourself because because there isn't anything really mm-hmm. so so now now what we are doing now in this planet in this time is that this is the first time on the history of this planet that the entire planet is connected we are we have networked the entire planet mm-hmm. so that there is no part of this ball not within like 
I can see it. I can the space left to explore. And why would I want to go to beach? Because I want to go to some place which is which is where nobody has like not nobody also, but just that it's that I want to experience that. I want to experience being somewhere for the first time. Mm -hmm. Even if I know hundreds and thousands of people before me have been there, but it's not, uh, it's somehow different. It's somehow different. And, and, and that possibility is being taken away more and more as we move forward because we are more and more networked through all kinds of pipelines of transport and uh, connection and communication and internet and um, all kinds of pipelines connect the entire planet. We are literally networked. We're fully networked. Oil, water, gas, communication, data, transport, everything is traveling at full speed in all directions constantly. What happens when we've completely networked the entire planet? What happens then? We're like, we're like, there is a, there is a, there is a, any say circular fruit, we're an orange and the fun the the fungal network is fully like there's a fungus on all of it we're fungus we're the organisms we network the entire thing now what we want to do is we want to blow up we want to blow up in the sense we're like this is not enough anymore we want to go out and which is why there's this desire and need to want to 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 leave you know what is this desire to leave like i see on instagram uh many many of these posts where there's like a person in an ast with in, in a suit like in an astro in a space suit and they're lying on some obscure place or on water it's like this star trek it's like star star wars it's like we we, we really think we're there we want to leave and the reason is this because there isn't anything here which is any more like new or romantic you know like what mm -hmm. will i what will i tell my girl hey i'll take you to some place nobody has been to but there isn't any place like that you know <laughs> so it's like this like living in plastic you know it's like swimming in the ocean of plastic is okay because so i accepted it i'm like fine i just gotta take my son and lie in this plastic bag uh lie around this plastic bags uh even though because that's reality and so so it's it's this thing mm -hmm. and i guess i guess it's um, and more and more people think about it then more and more other people will think about it and, and and more and more we will move in that direction I just feel it's inevitable because this ball has been completely where unprecedented in history when more more than ever been now the number of human beings the number of these little spores of uh, our you know like our bodies and minds we're just hanging around all of this never before have there been so many people on this planet? Never before have we been so networked. Never before mm -hmm. have we ha had so much control over each each of this resource. We're gonna want to explore more, hundred percent. And we, it's it's I I I find ethics. It's it's hard. It's it's um it's an impossibility. It's a it's what can one say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Medical science wouldn't have been possible without uh, wouldn't have been possible if we were being very ethical. Hey, let's not let's not cut up this human being. Uh, but but here we are, and and all of this. So we're built we're built on that on that blood and war and and a lot of uh, sacrificing of our own and the other and all all of that. So I feel that it's just this. We're just agents in this larger emergent system and this is uh, if mycelium behaves this way and if then if humans behave this way we just see it more closely mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a more this complicated is, application the, yeah, yeah i completely agree the, the one of the things that i found myself uh, agreeing strongly with uh, is like ethics is uh, is a lose lose situation cuz i I see that as as a universal truth, and to be honest, one of the reasons why it interests me so much is because it never gets old to talk about ethics, no matter what the question is. Um, it's more of an either or thing, which is why I asked you the question. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with the answer I've gotten. Um, I think I'm I'm exhausted all the points that are written down for this interview. If there's anything you wanna add to what you've already said, you can say that or like ask people to check out your website or whatever you want to do. The floor is yours. Oh, okay. 
yeah um visit fieldness.com it's an iteration of uh, a, wor- a, pro- a project a thing i'm working on it's the first iteration and we'll improve it but it would be great if uh, deep fried crowd checked out fieldness.com and um and also my website which uh, is longer to pronounce <laughs> but we will find a way to tell you <laughs> put in a link or something yeah for sure uh check out sultana's work uh through the link down in the description that's it thank you so much for doing this thank you thank you for this really nice conversation okay gang that's all i have for you this week i really wish i had not botched the recording of this podcast like i did because it was such a great conversation and sultana was like such an amazing guest that was completely engaged and embracing of the medium um but regardless I do believe that she speaks for herself and her work is amazing which you should check out through the links down in the description. As for the podcast, if you like the podcast, make sure you go to our YouTube page and by our I mean mine. I'm the only one who runs this thing. Go to my YouTube page and subscribe to the YouTube channel that helps me gauge what kind of regular audience is present for this content. Along with that, if you really like the ep- episodes, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. If not um there is a merchandise l- post linked down in the description through which you can buy deep fried neurons merchandise and help support the podcast and beyond all of that please remember to take care of yourself uh thank you for listening thank you for tuning in wherever you tune in google podcast spotify um any platform that accepts my podcast to be honest um thank you so much for your time and have a nice day ahead